What's it all about? Why are we here? Is there a God? What happens when we die? In this series, I'm talking to public figures about these questions. Like me, none of them claims to be a religious expert, but all of them have, at times, had cause to think about the meaning of life. Hello, and our guest is Mr. Noel Gallagher, and thank you, sir, for taking the time. A pleasure. Since this program is called The Meaning of Life, I'm going to start with a small miracle which happened in May of this year, when Manchester City, in injury time, slapped one in <laughs> and gained the premiership over a crowd called Manchester United. Mm. And I want you to tell me, what did that mean to a young fella or young fellas from Burnage in Manchester? It means... Everything, everything, supporting that team for, since I was five or six or 40 years, I haven't seen them do anything really. It was just breathtaking, the most breathtaking five minutes of football I've ever seen. Amazing. And on a scale of, to do with marriage and sex and having a child and a number one of the charts and everything else, how does it compare? Up there with that? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And my wife understands that. I wouldn't give up my kids and my family for City winning the league, but I'd, I'd give up a few number ones, that's for sure. Would you? Yeah, well, I've had nine. I'd give up four of those. <laughs> four of them weren't the best. <laughs> OK, take me back to uh, Burnage and the household you lived in, Peggy and Thomas. Uh, where in Ireland were they from? My mum is from a place called Charlestown in uh, County Mayo. My dad is from a little place called Dooleek in County Meath. I was born in... Uh, an area of Manchester called Longsight, uh, in a house, as I remember, was on the top of uh, a sloping little alleyway with cobbled, proper cobblestones. And uh, it was a two-up, two-down, outside toilet. Uh, working class, grim northern reality, yeah. Was it a very Irishy, Irishy house? Yes, yeah, there was <laughs> shillelaghs everywhere. But we always spent our summer holidays and any school holidays in uh, County Mayo. Uh, Irish nights in St Kent's, Chawton Irish Club, that kind oh, of... Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. St Kent's, yeah. How do you know about that? I did my stint in oh, Manchester uh, as well, you know. Oh, yeah, St Kent's. I used to see. play for their football team, I think. And w was there Irish music going on in the house? And... Oh, yeah, my dad, was a d my dad was a DJ. He was um, a oh. co yeah, country and he'd play all the Irish social clubs, a country and western DJ. Uh, speaking about your father, it, it has been written much about his alcoholism and his violence and mother doing a skip in the end and, and all of that. You seem to play that down as if it was sort of average for the area and, and the time. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think he was an alcoholic. It just doesn't, I just think he was a bit of a rubbish husband. But I've got to say, all my friends who are my age, all their... All their families are split up. So it was kind of par for the course. The 70s was a tough time in Manchester. Not only for working class people, but for Irish people, you know, with the troubles that were being brought over there and stuff like that. And it was a tough time. You know, there wasn't a lot of work and there wasn't a lot of money. But I don't, I don't look back on any of that time with any regret or sadness. It kind of makes you what you are. It, it didn't mean that you were an unhappy child. I discovered music and... There was a guitar in our house for some reason. No one's ever quite got to the bottom of why that was there. Once I picked that up, that was my escape from everything. No matter what was going on at home or what was going on at school or anything like that, I had that. And, I, and still to this day, I can sit and pick up a guitar and I can be gone for hours. I can be just anywhere I want to be, just playing. You don't see your father? No. It must have been bad then that you may have no contact with him or him with you or... Well, no, I seen him after, after my mum and dad split up. We still seen him. when he lived about 200 yards up the road. My mum never said anything like, you can't see him or anything like that. We seen him. We still... He still had his own firm of laying concrete floors and we still did a bit of work with him. But then very soon after that, we, you know, we kind of became men. And then you go off and do your own thing. It's not, um... It's not shocking for families to become estranged when, particularly family of boys, when they all get them start doing their own thing. Did you and Paul have a stammer? I did. I think Paul, yeah. I think Paul did. We used to go to speech therapy. And you got over the stammer? Eventually. Eventually. 
Okay, uh, uh, tell me about um, religion in your house. Now, your mother and father must have been traditional Irish yeah. Catholics. Yeah. My yeah. mum would take us to church every Sunday until... I'd say we were teenagers and then... And then we just stopped going. I think we were maybe the only Irish family, if I remember correctly. Maybe not. I remember my English friends would be like, what are you going to church for? We'd be like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm going to church. But you just went kind of ritually... Yeah, because my, my, my mum went and that, and that was the thing to do, you know. Yeah. And did she stop suddenly or was it a slow burnout or, or what? I'm not sure. But now she goes. How do you know? Because she tells me. You know, she tells me she's been to Mass and stuff like that. She's praying for you and for the rest of the family <laughs> and everybody else. And yeah, for one, one would hope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you...